enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, praise his name, for the Lord is good. God reveals his presence. Let us now adore him and with awe appear before him. May our worship be in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We will continue as we sing to the glory of God the hymn number 502. Beni no chodon go acho si on do ka ba ibo for the gift of a day like this. A day we have prayed for, a day we have hoped for, and a day you have graciously given to us. Lord, as we prepare for this day's awesome duties, we pray your Holy Spirit to be with us, your Holy Spirit to lead us, your Holy Spirit to be in us, your Holy Spirit to be, be behind us and to consume us that everything that is done this day, Lord, will be done to the glory of your name. Be with your children, Lord, as we dedicate this building to the glory of your name, knowing that, Lord, if we, our actions glorify you, the blessings will be ours. We thank you and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We open this building in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let peace, which passes all understanding, be with this building. All will enter and all will come out of it. May this building be a peaceful residential area for all the Christians and believers and those who want to seek the Lord in newness of life. Amen. 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 Yeah, but 
the processional hymn is Presbyterian hymn number 351. It will be appreciated if the congregants will not take their seats for the service to begin. Thank you.
rejoice in it. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Unless the Lord builds the house, he who builds will it in vain. Blessed is the name of the Lord henceforth, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Now we invite the presence team to lead us to give praises and adoration to the all glorious God. The psalm says, Our God dwells in his praise. So let us glorify God through songs of praise. Hallelujah. The whole humanity can we be on our feet as we give praises and adoration to the most high for how far he's brought us. He kept us the one who slept to us tonight and he's given us a life and he did he has done this wonderful thing for us. He needs to be praised and Lord and given adoration. Amen.
promise that in all places where you record your name, you will come unto your people to bless them. Come now, we entreat you, Spirit of the living God, according to your word, and dwell in this house, built to honor your most gracious name, that it may be to all who seek you within its courts, a temple of the living God, the sanctuary of the Most High. Blessed Lord Jesus Christ, the only Savior of humankind, who has the keys of David, who opens and no one shuts, grant that this house now open for the preaching of your gospel and the showing forth of your glory may always be filled with your presence and never remain a refuge to your people. Blessed Holy Spirit, giver of life, treasure of good, let your sanctifying power be upon us, that this place may be separated to your glory and hallowed forever, that all who worship in these walls may be your temple and dwelling place. Blessed and glorious Lord, God Almighty, three persons in one God, by whose power, wisdom and love all things are sanctified, enlightened and made perfect, enable us by your power, illumine us with your truth, perfect us with your grace, that now and always we and those who shall gather here may worship, glorify, adore, and praise you in the spirit and in truth. O oh, eternal Trinity, world without end. Amen. Amen. The Lord's Prayer, Amen. our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, We are now invited the singing band to give us songs as we bring our times to our Lord and Maker.
which we offer at your holy sanctuary, on your holy altar, in gratitude for what you have done for us as individuals, as families, as a church, as a community. Lord, in that appreciation, Lord, we show you the sign of our gratitude. And we ask your blessings over the tithe. We ask your blessings, Lord, over all those who have brought in their tithe. And all those who have not been able to bring it. We pray. We beseech you that you bless them too. May your favor be upon them, Lord. May your grace be upon each and every soul here. May your spirit look down on each and every one here with your fear. Lord, whatever there is on their hearts that we've worried about and cried about, Lord, may you take it up with this tight as an offering and relieve your people and bless your people. All of this, Lord, we've prayed and asked in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. At this point, we I invite the District Minister, Reverend Eric Kleinoche, to introduce the man who was very instrumental in arranging and leading the process of the acquisition of this property. Thank you very much. We want to introduce to you Mr. Kerry Stewart, who led the process in the purchasing of this facility. He will want to make a few statements, two minutes. Please receive it. Good morning. I am so happy to be here with my wife on such a festive and auspicious occasion. We are so grateful for the opportunity to have had the pleasure of working with so many of you. And I'd like to give honor to God for that pleasure and also to your leaders. I think you had wonderful leaders at this particular church. They worked. they worked so diligently on your behalf to make this happen. And I am godly proud to have been a part of it. I'd like to thank each of you who played the part. I know on behalf of the leaders, because without your giving, without your generosity, this would have not been possible. On every occasion when Marcus and the leaders came to a point where they said, oh, the people are just giving, the people are so generous, we know we're going to make this happen. It was so encouraging, and I hope you all appreciate your leaders, your pastor and your leaders to that effect. There was one occasion when there was an obstacle. We first looked at this property with your uh, church leaders in August of 2015. Well, somewhere around November or December, another party came forward and submitted a, an offer to purchase the property. And it was almost like a, a, a punch in the gut to so many of your leaders. Well, we came together and we simply agreed that you just continue to prepare because your opportunity would come around again. Unfortunately for the other people, they could not perform. And when it was time for you all to step in, you step right in. And the preparations were there. Your finances are in place. It was such a joy to see it happen. And the Bible says in James that faith without works is dead. It's useless. It's futile. So we saw your faith, and we saw it by your works. Your generosity in giving and your preparation to make this happen. We congratulate you, and we look forward to you celebrating here many, many, many years. Thank you so much. Thank you. We keep doing 
glory to God for how the Holy Spirit led the processes. We thank God for your lives and for being responsive and God asked you to give you did. God richly bless you all. We invite Cassandra Opal to give us a song.
and Rubio's sons. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Our first scripture reading for today is taken from Prophet Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 4 through 7. Jeremiah 29, verse 4 through 7. Let's hear the word of God. That says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles from to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant garden and eat their produce, take wives and sons and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons, give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there, and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find welfare. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray for the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find welfare. Here ends the first reading. Our second Bible is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Yet in terms of what you see, you know, you will know what Thessalonica may be kind, a tea room, 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 a tea
e ke pamne ake beni ame yale ame yetano chi ame te mo omene beni ena ake a chalele e kon e se e ba ni e ke e he ba be shi ni e bu e ho wa ni e mu e he e nyam ni e ke e ni e ke e he e bu shi ni e ke yesu e ke yesu na jam ni e ta e da shi ni e ke mi na mo shi ho wa shi mo ni She moaned, Samaria, yes, we hear the monkey. And he did bring your mind in time. She may name of you. Nana will be one day. Our third scripture reading is Luke chapter 17, 11 through 90. Luke. 17, 11 through 19. Let's hear the word of God. The subtitle is Jesus Heroes 10 Men with Leprosy. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into the village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. He stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master of pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at his feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. This is the word of God. We continue the service as we prepare our hearts and our minds to listen for the word of God. And it is going to be delivered by no less a person and the 15th moderator of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, the man of God, moderator who led the church into the general assembly structure of things, one of many parts, who is once served as the principal, then as the way called, of the Trinity Theological Seminary, and therefore, he has taught many, many, many Presbyterian ministers, Methodist ministers, and all those who had the opportunity to attend seminary in labor. His name is the very Reverend Dr. Sam Preggen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He stands in place, the present moderator, the right Reverend Professor Emmanuel Marty, who ought to have been here, but for his numerous assignments, would not come. Therefore, choose uh, the very Reverend Dr. Sam Prempe to represent. In. Baba, on behalf of the Woodbridge Congregation, Manuel, as they are called, we warmly welcome you. I know you are not a stranger here, but of course, in this very building, you are new. We visited some years back when we were still struggling to find our identity and uh, the Spirit of God was still brooding over us. 
and uh, by your prayer and consistency in support of the work in overseas mission field. Now we have taken shape. Thank God you have come. See what we work for in the initial stages when we were picking the stones from the farmyard down, planted, God has watered it, and it is growing. We are most welcome in the early years to hear what God has for us through you. We continue to sing the Presbyterian hymn numbered 276. Word of Christ is dear to us.
Beloved, say thank you. Seem to be a very simple thing. Two words, thank and you. And yet, for some reason, some people find it difficult to say thank you. For a good day, somebody has done for you, naturally, it requires you to say thank you, to show your appreciation and gratitude for a good work done. But to say thank you may depend on the mind of the person who is saying thank you. It could be for negative reasons, that is why you say thank you. It could be for positive. Whichever is the case, somebody is able to make what you mean by thank you within the context in which you say thank you. If you slap me and I say thank you, don't you assume that I appreciate your slapping me? <laughs> but I use the word thank you, all right. We are fully aware of the situation where we have had to say thank you from the depth of our heart in appreciation. We've all had occasion to say it. And we will continue to say it so long as Christ has not come. Always appeal to Israel, as was made clear to us in the first reading, was to show appreciation to the people among whom they were living under exilic conditions, which oftentimes was not the best they were to live a normal life. Now, in this context, implied building houses, having possession, movable or movable, making farms for our personal sustenance and the sustenance of others who are not able to make their farms, but who have to eat. Mary, being married, and give our children in marriage, sons and daughters, for partnership, for procreation, and growth. Above all, we were to seek the welfare of the people among whom we live by our action and our prayer. And ultimately, to seek the welfare of such people, whatever the circumstance. In a similar way, Paul admonishes his hearers, that is those in Thessalonica, and I want to believe that he meant it for you as well, to be mindful of what we do and make sure that at least the welfare of the people among whom we live have precedence and so to be able to say thank you to God for whatever the circumstance we find ourselves interesting as we were traveling to this place, something happened. And we started blaming each other. But we were consoled by the fact that whatever the circumstance, we should learn the lesson of saying thank you for whatever happens. And then we started giving illustrations and examples and instances of where people have had to be angry over something, but later on realizing that it was for the sake of God's mercy on us, God's grace. That is why 
what we thought humanly it should happen did not happen. And then we turn from anger to say thank you. Beloved, the story of the lepers is something which is full of illustration for us. Jesus in his ministry, we are told, was traveling through two or three villages. And apparently he hears some people screaming, literally screaming, Lord have mercy on us. He tends only to realize that these people were lepers, untouchable people. At best, a rabbi should not touch a leper. But these were the very people who accosted Jesus and said, Master, be merciful on us. We know and we believe that you are capable of providing the healing that we need to live normal lives because we have been ostracized from society. And yet we need to live. Jesus turns to the people and say, because of your faith, you have been healed. Go and show yourself the priest. Because there were certain procedural matters by which somebody who had his healing had to go through as a kind of justification, as a kind of confirmation for what he had experienced. And out of excitement, we all went. I wouldn't like to boil you down with the problem of leprosy. Because in the time of Jesus, among the Jews, every kind of skin disease was dreaded. And so such people were pushed into the village at a remote corner to stay there. It could have been to a man or a woman, a child or an adult, a celebrity, a military commander like Naaman had to go through this sickness. It could have been to a royal and also a foreigner. Out of excitement, we are told that only one out of nine, only one out of the number, I would say, show any appreciation by coming back to say, Lord Jesus, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Beloved, we have so much to do that we cannot overspend our time in expreciating this kind of subject matter. But at least the basic lesson that we all have to learn today is to learn the habit or the great lesson of saying thank you. Thank you. During my student days in Scotland, I had a minister friend who visited his church again and again. And he said, until one day that the wife decided to go and visit the parents on her own, he never knew what it means to say thank you. Because she had put all that had to be eaten and stored them in the freezer. All that he had to do was just pull it out, put it into the microwave, start it, and within one minute, the food is ready. And yet, again and again, he bent everything that he put into the food. I didn't cry enough on sir. Then he began to realize how much the wife was going through. That it seemed to take for granted literally every time the wife does something. 
And so, that people in a precision, at least, responded by faith. Quite so often, we want to see action where physical interaction of some sort takes place. But here is a situation where some lepers stand at a distance, they tell you, go to the priest, show yourself, and they say, we will go, because it's the word is from you, Jesus. What greater lesson can we learn today? That we have a Jesus who can heal from a distance, because his words are able to make a difference, provided we will believe. Hence my emphasis on the word faith. They should bring trust in Jesus. My question is, can it be said of you that you also have a modicum of trust? And are you a of stress, trust? A tiny trust, which, on the basis of which, we are able to get what we want because we will rely on Him. Even if only one should gratitude, we also need to learn what it means to be grateful. We need to learn what it means to say thank you. Because by so doing, we understand something about the God we are serving. Because as we say thank you and we come closer to Him, He also reveals Himself, His character, and His grace to us in a way that we have not understood over the years. And I want to believe that only grateful believers grow in understanding God's grace. Make it your habit. Say great, great, thank you even to your child, to your wife, to that maid in the house, to your God, because we would love to see you do just that. Beloved, I want to shorten my address by saying that Jesus' love extends to all and sundry, rich and poor, you and me, the outcast and the celebrity. All we need to do is to learn what it means to accept him in appreciation, believe and trust that he's capable of doing everything we ask of him. And I want to appreciate this fact that we will learn this lesson and go and share it with our children so that they will not only assume that once you are a mom, even washing the beast is only your duty. You finish it and then you feel that they need to uh, wash me or whatever it is and expect you to do the washing. They can learn how to be grateful by doing these more things which ultimately will endear them for a future life. Be informed of this great lesson which we can carry through life with all faithfulness. Beloved, today is a special day. We are opening and dedicating this building for the service of God. Before long, the police will come and 
tell us that we are overcrowded in this room. <laughs> yeah, but we are so full. And I'm not saying this to tease you, but as a mark of appreciation, as a mark of commendation, that we will someday after Sunday, at West, dress as you dress nicely with your uniforms, come and sing praises to God and say, Lord, we thank you. Luke is telling us that God is grace is for everybody. God's grace is for everybody. Much as he had patience and mercy for the leper and the foreigner, he will have this for us, provided we can trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. As I've said, today being a special occasion, let us in gratitude also learn what it means to say thank you. But it's also a pointer to the fact that with goodwill, so much can be achieved. I very much hope that we have already established that premise. That was when we were not here, in these beautiful surroundings, comfortable. Everybody who sees the pictures of this place will say, oh, we are in the new way. And God appreciates it. And so let us also learn what it means to say thank you to him. Again, I want to believe that in being able to do this kind of thing that we've done, we are in the sense being motivated to try to achieve more. And that anything we set ourselves to believing that God is on our side, we will ultimately achieve it. A lesson for ourselves and for our children and wards. Not to give up, but to persevere and to persist in everything that they do in the hope that they will be achievers in all that they do. I so congratulate you. I believe if the moderator was here, he would have said the same. Congratulate you for a good work done. May the good Lord bless all your endeavors. But I want to emphasize that after the final dedication of this building, it becomes the property of PCG. Somebody who is here, we need you. 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 But the thing is that it's been given to you in trust to use for yourselves and generations of believers who are coming. And therefore, it's not the kind of thing you will contribute to, and then when you are going home, you ask for your share. Oh, then, the panel. About to, it will be a place we are going to set aside as a point where we will meet our God face to face, where we will come and sing His praises, shout and scream and dance with all the excesses that go with this activity. But it is allowed because 
God, God wants to be at peace with him. A place where we will come and say thank you to God for a week long activity. A place where we will come and hear his word. Where we will hear him speak to us in the silence of our hearts. A place where we will come and equip ourselves to go out of there our comfortable zone, if I may be permitted to use that expression, to go and share what we've seen, what we've learned, what we've experienced, so that others may come and say, we also want to see, we also want to see Jesus. And they will come here to find love, hope, and joy, because You've created a platform for them to receive that and enjoy that. It is going to be a place where it becomes a platform, educational platform, for us to learn about marriage, to learn about child care, to learn about health and its implications to learn about the spirit which is in movement and is present with us here. It's going to be a place where we will come, receive and respond to God's love in a special way. I want to finally believe that we will come here and find contentment and inner transformation. May this our earnest prayer to God be what we all want to see happen here. In the name of the Father, of the Son, I know the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Shall we all be outstanding as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty. to say thank you in another form to God by giving our offering and we are blessed to have a law enforcement officer in Ghana with the rank of superintendent police officer superintendent officer for and a musician to bless us Offering. Hey, I'm asking my friend. Hey, my dear, my friend. Hey, my. Aha. Good, good, good. I'm asking my friend. Hey, my. So, so, we're going to give some more.
to lead us as we bring our offering to glorify God. This is
of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now, Lord, you are God, and you have promised this goodness unto your servants. Now, therefore, let us please him and bless his name, and this house he has set aside for his worship that it may be perpetually before he said before you for your blessing O Lord he shall be blessed forever Amen Amen shall we all sit and continue with the prayer let us pray almighty and everlasting God who dwells not in temples made with hands, but are pleased to dwell with those of humble and contract heart. We ask that you accept your servants and this house for your service, which in faith and love we have prepared for the honor of your name. Set forth your spirit upon us, that we may be clothed with righteousness, holiness, which becomes your house, and that this place may be filled with the glory of your promise and presence. Grant that your people may throb its courts with steps of joy, and that everything therein may make known your power and declare your glory. Give grace, O God, to your servants who shall minister your word and sacraments in this place, that they may speak as ambassadors of Christ. Give grace to your people who shall worship you, and they may receive your word with gladness. Have regard to the pure prayer of your people and to their supplications and receive the promise they bring to you and the offerings of their love. Be present that your loving Father, our loving Father, will be present with us every time we come here to meet him. That the eyes that have seen these great things will be opened the more towards his house, night and day, and hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you have heard us, give unto us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, what God be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. And in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I do now declare this house to be forever set apart for all profane, from all profane and common uses and consecrated with the wish and service of Almighty God to whom be the glory and majesty, dominion and power now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. We're going together to sing the hymn, Aye Yi Tum, Amen to Amen. Aye Yi
Madam Chair, I think Madam Chair is there around. Respect that anthem belonging to all of us, the great country of uh, I was at the function earlier, an individual sang the national and the rest of us yeah, did not join that day. It is our end, and I thank you all of you that respect to a great hand. It is a great hand. Let me first of all apologize for coming in late today. Thank the head of Chancery did explain to you why. I keep in there. Most of the time when I am invited by an AM group, I'm so eager to go and sit and chat with them. And the invitation always said, be there at nine o'clock prompt. That word is never left prompt. First invitation when I arrived there. It said nine o'clock. I was there at eight fifteen. There was nobody. I waited until twelve o'clock. He won't be there. My driver comes from the Philippines. After a second experience, he drew me a lesson. When your people invite you, always add three hours. <laughs> Madam Chair, the presiding bishop, Manano, distinguished men and women of God, the sons and Daughters of Mother Ghana, I give you all general salute this morning. Thank you very much. I like it very much when the presiding bishop, if I'm wrong, please forgive me, uh, said, We'll give you a short time. It is not for me, especially when I come amongst you know, fellow Ghanaian. I get carried away, but I'll make sure that I stay within that word, short. He didn't define it, but I'm going to define it. I will share, but I'm going to talk about three things, but very short. being referred to as the role model of democracy on the continent of Africa. Next year, March, our great country will be 60 years old. It's a great achievement. We are all part of that great achievement. Every one of us, our four. 
forefathers fought for our freedom. We haven't done badly, and we should not blame anybody if along the line we had problems. If we believe in our Maker, we should understand. As my old man and our forefathers used to say, Oprah, life is war. And it is the same with the country. Country is at war all the time. And it calls for planning, dedication, perseverance, and all that. Today, that black star is shining all over the place. Mother Ghana is rejoicing. Ghanaians within and without are doing great things. Let me just give you a few examples. In the diaspora, United States here, a few weeks back, President Obama appointed a Ghanaian professor by name Ali Omar to the Cancer Advisory Board. Son of the Lamb. This year alone, I've gone to stand behind two prominent Ghanaians. Dr. Thomas Mason from Atlanta, Dr. Victor Lawrence from I think New Jersey. These two gentlemen have been given the opportunity to join the Academy of Inventors in the United States of America. Just last week, President Obama commissioned African American Museum of History and Culture, who was the architect, a young Ghanaian called David Ajay. And there are many more that I can list here. We should that we belong to that country. The first sub-Saharan African country to become independent. During the independence celebrations, the late Martin Luther King was there. And he made a remark after the celebration. He said, so freedom is possible. States to make an impact in the struggle for the freedom of the black America. And today he is celebrating that country of ours today still stands on the continent as a leader. We have something to protect, no matter what. I always say that country was there before politics started. We shouldn't allow politics to divide this beautiful great man. I do not say we shouldn't do politics. We should do it. In an atmosphere, unity, peace, understanding, and of course, having at the back of our minds always that Ghana comes first. That is the short message. Number one. And let me add that. Ghana is before 
before and later as we speak. There are two things we put before our maker. One, we thank him for having taken us this far, 60 years. We are not at war in our country. Whatever it is, we have our freedom of speech to the extent that sometimes we even go overboard. So that is the first thing we put in before our maker today. Thank him. And ask for his brother blessings to move on. Number two, we are asking our maker for the past 25 years our country has experienced peace, stability, security, massive development. We are going to go to the elections. We've gone through it six times. Thank God for helping us through the six times that we've been through elections. We are going to go in for the seventh time. It should help us to go through it. With a united front thinking of our great country and its future. Those are the two things that all of us Ghanaians standing in front of our maker, asking him for his message. Number two. That was the end of my <laughs> Now number two. Very, very short. This beautiful edifice. Let me say, I equal to all of you and I think money and money. I am terrible. And I'm not surprised that we are all looking so beautiful this morning because we've entered into a beautiful building. That has come out of our own sweat. We have every right to be happy and to wait. How did this come about? The leadership of this church. With your support. I'm told that you used to worship in other places. Your maker could not stay at one place with you. There was a problem. Your leaders identified the problem. They sat down and strategized. And with your support, they embarked on a mission to get a place like this for you to worship your maker. The mission that you put before the leaders and the completion of this church has been accomplished. The mission has been accomplished. It is time to celebrate the achievements of this great church. That is why you've assembled here this morning. You've accomplished your mission. The great achievement. What next? Celebration. That is the mood we are in today. But let me put this question mark. It's beautiful. Next thing you have to sit with your leaders and look at is maintenance. I know that the way you supported your leaders, your contributions, you will not neglect that way. Maintenance. It must remain like this forever. I leave it to you. Finally, thank you. Well, thank you. Very often I ask myself, how many times in a day do I 
use that word beg. You check yourself. Go through the necessities. Count them. How many times do you say thank you in the day? To your wife, to your body, the driver who drove you to work, the people who attended the, ch attended the church and listened to you. Isn't it very, very right for us to come and sit down to love you? For heaven help us, giving us the wisdom, the leadership, the wisdom, brought us together to accomplish a mission. You have done the right thing. Coming here this morning to give thanks to you. As the Bible says, he is a generous God. Give me his due. And that is what we are all doing this morning. And now I bring you greetings from our president, the government, and the people of our great country. They all join me to say, I go to you. Oh, oh bless you. Thank you. Now we can bless the offering. So we call on Reverend Felix and Wuchi to give the blessing. After that, all members of the planning committee get ready to be introduced by the district minister.
We pray that you will continue to endow them with the occasion so that they can continue to serve the church in various ways, all to the glory of your holy name. As they live here, we pray that your presence will go with them, support them in all that they do, so that whatever they begin, continue, or end, they may do all to the glory of your holy name. In your son's name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of the Lord and of His Son Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We are grateful to you all. Many of you will knock at your door. We ask you to do things for us. This is this very amazing. And she didn't know anything I said. She said that I shouldn't tell anybody. So I didn't say anything about it. And yet she is Mrs. Rebecca. Very good. Can I say something? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I as at 3 a.m. Some people were still here. Mama Ru said, please come home. But I couldn't leave because these small, small girls were here, so I couldn't leave them. I was afraid if I should leave, somebody would come and bounce on them. I was protecting them. Um, thank you so very much. God richly bless you. At the right time, um, session will come back to you. But you have not finished your job. Remember? We have to do an evaluation and then give us a full report and then we will finally say well done to you. Thank you very much for the this. Gradually we begin the service to a close. We send our closing hymn the Bethesda.
place out. I am sorry. Let me introduce to you the Reverend Dr. John Tati. And his name is Pastor Tati. We just ended the service. But it's better late than never. Thank you so very much. We will, we will talk after the service. Thank you so very much. Thank you for coming.